Thoughts and Meditations, page 142 May 16, 1914 I was interrupted yesterday when I was trying to formulate the experience I had and now everything seems changed that precise knowledge that clear sightedness has given place to a great love for the o lord which has seized my whole being from the outer organism to the deepest consciousness and all lies prostrate at thy feet in an ardent aspiration for a definitive identification with thee an absorption in thee i implored thee with all the energy i could summon and once again just when it seemed to me that my consciousness was going to disappear in time just when all my being was nothing but a pure crystal reflecting thy presence someone came and interrupted my concentration such is indeed the symbol of the existence thou givest me as my share in which outer usefulness the work for all holds a much greater place even than the supreme realization all the circumstances of my life seem always to tell me on thy behalf it is not through supreme concentration that thou will realize oneness it is by spreading out in all may thy will be done o lord now i understand clearly that union with thee is not an aim to be pursued so far as this present individuality is concerned it is an accomplished fact since a long time and that is why thou seemest to tell me always do not delight in the ecstatic contemplation of the union accomplish the mission i have entrusted to thee upon earth and the individual work to be carried on simultaneously with the collective work is to become aware and take possession of all the activities and parts of the being the definitive establishment of consciousness in the highest point making possible both the prescribed action and the constant communion with the the joys of perfect union cannot come until what has to be done is done first union must be preached to all afterwards work but for those who have realized the union every moment of their life must be an integral expression of thy will through them Seventeen, nineteen, fourteen. O Lord, deliver me from the mental influences which weigh upon me, so that completely free I may soar towards Thee. O Thou, universal being, supreme unity, in perceptible form, through an irresistible aspiration, I nestle within Thy heart. then i was thy heart itself and i knew then that thy heart is no other than the child who plays and creates the worlds thou didst tell me one day thou will be my head but for the moment turn thy gaze towards the earth and on earth now i am the joyful child who plays These were the two sentences I wrote yesterday by a kind of absolute necessity the first as though the power of the prayer would not be complete unless it were traced on paper 
the second as though the stability of the experience could not be had unless i unburden my mind of it by noting it down in writing may 18 1914 to are the soul reality o lord to are omnipotence and eternity and he who is united with thee in the depths of his being becomes thy reality in its eternal and immutable omnipotence but for others the command is even while remaining in contact with thee to turn their eyes and activity towards the earth such is the mission thou hast given them here begins the difficulty for everything depends upon the perfection of the various states of their being and even after attaining the sublime identification they must still work at perfecting the instrument which will manifest thy divine will this is where the task becomes arduous everything seems to me mediocre insufficient neutral almost inert in the present instrument which do make us me call myself and the more i am united with thee the more do i realize the mediocrity of its faculties and its manifestation everything in it seems to me an incorrigible approximation and if that cannot disturb me in any way it is because the true self is lying at thy feet or nestling in thy heart or conscious with thy eternal and immutable consciousness and looks at the whole manifestation with a smile of patient and understanding benevolence